Uh Hello and welcome to another episode of Talking With Myself. Uh uh uh, Talking With Myself. Uh uh uh, I'm all alone, there's no one here beside me. See? My troubles are all gone, there's no one to deride me. But you gotta have I don't know, the Shrek thing, you know. What am I doing? I'm home. We're back. We're here. I cleared a bunch of videos off of everything. Um, we've got like a, <laughs> so many hundreds of gigs of storage now, so I'm just filling it back up with me, and that's fine. And um. We had a lot of stuff, and I deleted a lot of things that I uploaded, but that means if something gets deleted off the internet, it'll be gone forever, which will be a bummer. Actually, I think, you know, I don't know. It's the whole thing where I think that, you know, YouTube might be cool, and if it deleted a video of ours, we could download it back sort of thing, but also... I don't know. What if what if it all went away tomorrow? Wow. And even if this if if it real if that did happen tomorrow, this wouldn't come out. So if you're seeing this, <laughs> the internet is still around. So that's good for uh for some things. Probably bad for some things too. I'm sure what would be better if we didn't have the internet? <clears throat> um, relationships, probably. Maybe. Eh, actually, I don't know. Because I feel like the internet's kind of cool for that. Because eh, I feel like depending on who you are, it's good or bad. Because um, I feel like the internet, you know, it's really good at putting shitheads on blast. And it gives us, us fellas, you know... <laughs> A good list of what not to do. Even though we already should have known. <laughs> it's like, I didn't know that I could... Right. You know, I don't know. Don't be a dick, I think, is the morale of something. Um, What happened today? I went to work, and that was whatever. And then I uh, right, wrote some stuff, and that was also whatever. Then... I went to uh, improv practice and that that was fun. Um <clears throat> there was a what happened? There was okay. We're all, you know, improv people are very uh you know, they talk a lot and they're very, you know, they got to get close and comfortable with people right right away cuz you know, they're working together. We got to we got to you know, stage chemistry and all that. And I've grown kind of numb to people getting, you know, up on you when we're rehearsing or filming something. And then, uh, let's see, we were all talking and taking bits too far. Like, we were all, you know when, like, you and all your friends are, like, flirting with each other? Because, <laughs> like, your buddies. And that's what it seemed like we were all doing. And then, uh, and then this one gal, she yes handed herself into my lap and i was like mm, okay and then said yes handed her off of my lap sort of thing and said something she did whatever didn't think anything of it it was fine and i know that seems like a brag this seems like a brag so far and i promise it's gonna come out hopefully with me being the butt of it but so far we're in the cocky phase of said story girl sits on lap and then gets off fast forward um let's see then i went to the bathroom and then i came back and i should also add during that whole fast forward period i was just being myself which was giving off impressions of whatever impressions i give off and there was after the fast forward part still kind of in the cocky part um, I went to the bathroom and I came back out and I think this was why, but my hands were a little damp, I think, or I got water or something. 
I don't know. I had a little bit of water on my hands and this kid walked by me and he started, I think, a bit. And uh, he was like, what did he say? He was like, water. And I was like, "Uh uh-huh, what are you up to or something? H H2, go away. I don't know. Um, But he, uh, I don't know, the punchline of the whole thing is he looked at my palm and I was like, look at that. And then he kissed my fist. It was nice. Did a little thing. And I was like, ha ha, my man. And then um, I was walking back to the table and a girl who sat on lap was like, you guys would make a great couple. And I was like, I know, right? Thank you. You know, improvise, (laughs) stick into the bit. And I was like, yeah, I bet. I'm just, I I didn't know if it was all in my head or if it actually came across like that. And I'm glad it did. So thank you for the verbal confirmation. And then, uh, and then she just asked, she was like, which way do you swing? And I was like, hmm? Like, which way do you swing? And I was like, like for the bit or like for real life? Because now we're kind of in a weird spot where if I seem like, if I, if I disclose that I'm straight right away, then she'll be like, I was just doing the, the bit thing. You kissed your hand. And I was going to like set you guys up or something. And that would look dumb. But if I like kept it going and it like wasn't a bit, then that could have been weird. And I didn't know where we were at. So I had to ask. I was like, for the bit or for real life? And she was like, real life. And I was like, ah, uh, regardless of the vibe I give off, I, I do swing for the other team. And then she was like, what? And I was like, hmm? And then, uh, and that was the end of that. So, yeah, I wasn't, um, <laughs> I wasn't like cool, so cool that just people want to sit on me. It was, uh, yeah. Thought I was gay. That's, that makes sense. And, you know, it's cool to seem, I guess, not threatening which is cool. But that happened today. And I thought it was notable. Um, 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 um. Let's see here. What what did I, I I typed, I typed something. Oh yeah. Nice moment that I saw earlier. Um, There was, I was driving home from improv practice and uh, well, this is a side note. Practice and rehearsal. Um, I think I call it practice, but it would all it could be considered a rehearsal. But I think this is it's like a it's just like an improv group that I meet with, and we do improv games and sometimes do shows, but they're never like consistent. So I think it was practice. And now, and I and I just said that, so I don't know if that matters or not. But I was leaving, driving home from improv practice, and there was a car next to me that was in rough shape. Sure, it had some rust on it. It uh, had some dents, you know. So does mine. What are you going to do? And in the car, there was a mom and her son. And after further investigation... I was also, I was driving. I wasn't like, what's going on in there? But she, uh, I was looking and they were, they were dancing. They were dancing along to a song. And then I saw her, she like showed her phone to her son and it was like on whatever the music thing. And like he chose a song and you could tell that they both got like, they got like so excited to listen to this song because it was like their song. It was was like, I don't know. It's like, you know, when you're in the car by yourself and you're just like, this is my song and I'm jamming out. No one sees me unless <laughs> I'm pretty sure nobody sees me in the off chance that there's some kid with a podcast around that <laughs> has a sneaky eye. But uh, I'm pretty sure I'm by myself. So I'm going to dance like it was like that. But like mother and son and it was beautiful, dude. They were jamming out together. It was so cool. And the kid was like, I don't know kid age and like up in the front seat and i think like old enough to be in the front seat but he was a little guy so uh i only saw like this much of his head um which just made it all the more adorable um i just i was making up conversations of what was going on in there 
Maybe the kid was like, Mom, can we listen to, um, I don't know, the Immortal Techniques of the Dance with the Devil song? And she was like, oh, sure thing. Let's dance, son. Or whatever song mom and, and kids listen to that elicit a wholesome emotion. Um, <clears throat> if you don't know, that song is not one of those. Look it up if you want, but it's sad. Um, I wrote notes down, but they're on my phone. And my phone is filming me. Um, and that's fine. Um, do you ever, like... <laughs> I? So I like, I like to write ideas down. Little, little blurbs, little thises and thatses. And... I wrote one the other day and I don't remember what sparked this thought, what uh, started these, this uh, string of thoughts, but uh, I wrote down picture of clothes and then I wrote caption clothes, but no cigar. So I guess just a picture of clothes as long as there's not a cigar in it. Um, and that's just, that's just that. Uh, what else has been going on? Where's Samson? He is in Oregon right now. And I am bored. And that's why this is happening. Um, you know, let's just get some thoughts out before bed. I haven't had anyone to interrupt any thoughts yet today. So, you know, I'm going to try to do it. I'm going to try to do it by myself. Um, by myself, by myself. All by myself. That wasn't me saying that. Wink. Um, 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 I'm singing a lot of things because it's fun. Hopefully you like my voice. If not, this fucking sucks for you um i don't know i'm not the best singer but we're working on it you know we're we're trying we're trying to to get there um yeah man i don't know like what's like a fun thing to to i'm gonna play my uh my word in my head I can think of words so quickly uh, but I what's the fucking thing what's the activity that I do that I like doing called word association dipshit I'm talking to myself I mean I have been this whole thing but that that especially the dipshit comment that was for this guy that was for this fella but I like to play this game. It's kind of like a, it's, it's sort of, so when I, when I write a lot of times I like to write, um, with no plan, just the, just I like basically writing for the sake of writing with no intention of showing it to anybody with no intention of making it a stage thing or a film or a thing to talk about on a podcast or whatever. I just want to write it, and then later on, I'll be like, this seems like it could be this. This seems like that, or whatever. And with this um, word, is so, and I, I think it's good just because, you know, write as much as you can, whether anyone sees it or not, it's good practice, and that's what this game is, that I like to play with myself. I like to play with my... <laughs> this is dumb. But uh, it's... Basically, I'll, like, say a word... And then I just can't stop. I can't stop talking until I, like, I'll, I'll see a thing and then I'll relate it to something else and try to relate that to something else and try to either maybe bring it around full circle or find a joke out of it or something. Um, but it's kind of a fun way to, like, just be like, ready, set, go, and brain work, do your thing. That also, what I just did, those last, like, ten words I said, um, seem like, uh, fuck, 
what was my point? Go on, brain. Do your thing. Hmm. Damn. Brain fart. I've been doing that recently. Um, the word association game is a way to just tell your brain, ready, set, go, and don't stop till you make something work. <sighs> Fuck, I don't know what I was going to say about that, which should show how well this game's going to go. Should I start it or should I keep stalling? I'll do the thing. So I'll start with uh, something like, for example, this can. Can, I can, you can, 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 the dance from like Moulin Rouge, can, can, da, 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 can, da, 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 music, Moulin Rouge music, musicals, Moulin Rouge absinthe, I've always wanted to try absinthe, seems rad, I've uh, heard it makes you hallucinate, and I also heard that, you know, a lot of places in the US sell it, but apparently it's like a shit version, so you have to get it from, like, imported from another country or something, which sucks, because, uh, it takes forever, and I don't know how to do that. I'd rather just go to the liquor store and pay an absurd amount of money to get a bottle of legit absinthe. But also the thing with absinthe is I don't know. I have heard there's like a way to properly drink it, but I don't. Oh, I remembered what the thing I was going to say before, and I'm going to pause the game and do it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, okay. Uh, when I said the thing, it's like telling your brain what to do or whatever. The way I said it was... I thought didn't seem like I was trying to make it seem like it's like telling your brain comma quotes go and don't stop end quote what I was going to say was that is a lot like when people say something that is being said in person should not be taken in the same context as if you like read it written down because it's going to seem different and this was the opposite of that where if you read what i had said it would have made more sense than why when i had said it and that was only because i'm very critical of how i'm talking because i was just said basically an acting class and i don't think i delivered that line very well but also i think i might kind of did because it was organic and i just said it and i was just talking and there were no lines so who said i said it right or wrong and now we are back in the game and because i did that and brought it back together the game is over <laughs> round one done that was fun <laughs> fuck yeah we did it see that's a bit we just did a we did a you and me we did that together should we do another? Why am I asking anybody? I can do whatever I want. Which is kind of like the biggest freedom and the biggest restriction. It's like the... I forgot who said it, but it's like if you're on... If you're in Antarctica and someone was on the... If you're in like the very tip, tip top of the planet and you're like, how do I get to San Francisco? Or I, guess, I would guess probably just the South Pole somebody would be like you go that way or that way or that way or that way you, you can go that way too straight down you can go over <laughs> hell you can go th that way for all, for all you know you can go to the left also and uh and that sometimes would probably give somebody a panic attack because they're like i can go wherever i want like where i need I need you to say, go that way. And I think it might be because we're all sheep or something. We can't like just make a decision. I don't know. Unless we've always been like that. And by we, I mean people. And uh, I don't know. Those, uh, what are they called? Horseshoe crabs. Those things are cool. Because <clears throat> um, they look like they would kill the shit out of you. But apparently they wouldn't. Or do they don't? Or maybe they choose not to. Maybe every animal that hasn't killed us just hasn't like needed to yet. Damn. What if? Um, okay, let's play that game. Um, let's see. This is this thing right here. Table, tablecloth. Ready, set, go. 
tablecloth, cloth of table, table. Yesterday, I had a film crew over at my house, and this kid sat on a table that I have, and he broke it. And the rest of the day, he kept breaking shit. So we kept saying everything after that wasn't a table, so we didn't have to break it because the whole thing was like, he broke the joke, and that's how jokes work, and that's how inside jokes work. And it's crazy what can start an inside joke, and it's also really annoying when people think it's annoying when uh usually with an inside joke for that to work you need more than one person to be involved i think i think you only need more than one person for that to work because uh well now let's hold on let's pump the brakes a little bit can you have an inside joke with yourself that is funny to everybody else i feel like you only can if you're on tv problem solved solved detective detective work private investigator hiring a private investigator to do weird shit what weird shit would be a fun thing to hire a private investigator to do (gasps) how about something not at all involving investigating jack shit just be like yo can you go i don't know get my groceries can you i have laundry my dryer is broken can you fix that what if you hired a private investigator and paid him more than anyone he he'd ever been paid to privately investigate and you paid him way more than that just to do normal stuff? Not normal. What is normal? To do not private investigator stuff because I think it's funny to have people do things that they... It's not funny, Max. No. It's not funny to make people uncomfortable and you know that (laughs) it's funny to think about maybe hiring somebody who's a librarian to mow your lawn if they were down there we go that's oh there's a fly here that's fucking awesome i'll tell you why there's a fly here you want to be a guest buddy Hopefully you heard him. There's a So yesterday, there was a film crew in my house. Oh, yeah, that round is done. We're talking about a thing now. Um, I guess I paused it. Unless if we come back to it, I paused it. If I don't, then the round was over and I won. But there was a... Fl- <laughs> this fucking fly. I had a film crew over at my house yesterday. And we had a bunch of stuff, people coming in and out all day. And so there were doors just being left open. <coughs> Whoa, dude. You got to That was a gross sound. Now let's try to make... Oh, man. Now I really put myself in a hole because I can't call myself... I can't say that I'm going to make a pretty sound because what if I don't? I'm not that good at seeing yet to where I can just guarantee a solid fucking thing. Only one way to find out. Uh... There it is. You be the judge. What was I saying? (laughs) Damn it. I get so caught up in sidetrack things, and I cannot stay on the tracks. Danger on the track. Fuck, what was I just talking about? We were playing the game, and then I said if I go back to the thing, then I paused it, and if I don't, then I won, because now, oh my, wow, I really shot myself in the dick here, because I was like, cool, because I'm talking about this thing now, now I don't need to play this game, but I fucking forgot the thing, because I wanted to make some little joke, and now I'm off track, and these, if I could just do that and get back on track, that's what makes a professional. I also probably wouldn't be drinking. But, like, I haven't signed a W-2. So, you know, if you're HR, you can do anything you want. Um, Flies. There's a fly in my house. (laughs) Shout out to the fly for being right there. Now I remember. I had a film crew over at my house. There were doors being left open. So, naturally, flies got the fuck inside all over and since it's a film crew it's it's, since we're all filming we have catered food everywhere there's you know grips and stuff don't eat healthy so there's donuts and 
sugary shit everywhere. And the flies are going crazy. They're all over the place. Luckily, it kind of fits with the thing we're filming. But um, once we were done filming, the problem was the fly actors didn't fucking go home. We had goldfish actors in this scene, and they left before the flies did. And they can't even do air, I don't think. Flies can, though. And they were in the house because we've got tons of air. and So I guess it makes sense why the flies stayed. But, uh, yeah, so everybody left, and I was like, cool, house back to myself. Now I can hang out. And then a thousand flies everywhere. And I was like, I cannot cook with this food. I'm not, not like, I can't make my beets with these flies everywhere. I can make rat beets, and they are not good but I can make them, whether flies are around or not. Uh, uh, tsk, uh, uh, tsk. Fuck off. And <clears throat> the flies, I didn't have, we don't have a fly swatter. I didn't have any actual fly traps. And I looked up on the internet the way to make a fly trap. You need apple cider vinegar for most of them. And I don't have that. Didn't have that today. I used to. Me and my roommates, used, we had a shot ski, and every morning we would take shots of apple cider vinegar. If you got a couple of roommates, do it. It's a lot of fun, and you'll bond, and you might make out. Um, and then, uh, you know, someone might say that you guys would make a cute couple and ask which way you swing. Round one and two. But the flies, they were everywhere. And I didn't have apple cider vinegar. I didn't have a fly trap. I didn't have anything. And I looked up, like, how to make a fly trap. And I, it said you need a plastic bottle. I was like, oh, perfect. I don't... This isn't a brag. It's just a thing. I don't drink anything out of just a normal plastic bottle. Like a soda bottle or anything. And not even water. But I, I guess I do drink stuff out of bottles. But I didn't have any water bottles here. And... Side note that I'm going to forget what I was just talking about, but <laughs> flies and my side note was that, damn it, Max, you fucking idiot. <sighs> I looked up on, oh yeah, so why did I get like self-conscious when I talked about the soda bottle thing? And that goes into what we've talked about on several way older episodes, Samson and I, about how I'm like really bad with food. Like not eating bad, but like I'm very specific about like it's like a mental eating disorder. Like I, I can eat whatever. I'll eat whatever. I don't mind eating whatever, but I hate eating like around people. I don't like eating when nobody else is eating. I don't like eating an unhealthy thing around somebody eating a healthy thing. If I'm eating, basically my way to eat comfortably is in a room or a house that I know that no one's coming in unless I am, you know, deciding that. Um, and I guess that's kind of it. And if I don't have anything to do later, because my tummy gets upset sometimes. But... Um, I just, I, I don't know. I feel like when I'm eating food and someone sees me eating food in my head, I know this isn't true, but in my head, they're looking at me going, you need to eat or something. It just feels like vulnerable. It's like, I don't know. It's, it, <laughs> it feels like getting caught, like jerking off or something. Like they just see you and you're like, ah, ah. Uh, pasta at, at 9 30 a.m or something like i it's just i don't know and also because for some reason people need to know what you're eating even if they have no intention of eating the thing you're gonna eat which is crazy it's and and that's i know is a me thing like it's on me for getting annoyed that people are curious about anything i'm doing <laughs> like that's I know I need to work. I cannot get mad at people for that. In my head, I go, why do you care? But, like, I shouldn't get mad. 
we're working on it. But if, yeah, I don't like if I'm eat if I'm eating like, I don't know, a pizza or something and someone's like, and someone comes up to me and is like, eating pizza? It's just, it's so many, 50 shades of unnecessary. It's first of all, yeah. There's no second of all. That's just, it's just, you see pizza in my fucking mouth. And then it makes you, and also, but like, what makes it different is I know we've done episodes on here where we've, we're eating something has been important. And I don't, I feel like mostly what it is, is maybe I feel like I have a reputation with some people for being like the healthy whatever. And I feel like if I ever like breach that, then they're going to be like, oh, tubby or whatever. And because of that, I don't eat lunch (laughs) (laughs) or something. I don't know. I'm also, it's also the thing, like I just do a lot of stuff during the day that's very physical. And if I'm going to eat something, it has to be, it kind of has to be specific, like a little salad. Like ideally I want to, I want to like pig out anytime I eat. If I want to eat, I want to fucking eat food. But you just, every time there's food around, you can't eat all the food, even though that's what you're used to doing by yourself. (laughs) If you're with a group of people, like three or four, and they order like two slices of pizza, like you can't just eat all of that. Like you have to... (laughs) share it or something which is crazy uh that i don't know that's now i'm just kidding this is and the flies were in my house and i looked up (laughs) that's why i'm insecure about mentioning that i might have had an empty soda bottle in my house because i was like i don't i don't want you to think that i was drinking shit this isn't shit it's alcohol (laughs) See, like, Max, where are your boundaries? You don't make any sense. You don't want people knowing that you drink soda, but you'll just get slammed like five podcasts in a row. What's wrong with me? And now that made me self-conscious because it makes it seem like I just put out there that we film like five podcasts in five days and I was hammered for all of them. When in reality, it's like maybe, maybe one a week. But still... It's all an insecurity. This would be better if it was soda, probably better for me. But it's also late, so I should probably you know in a bed. Which this is no better than soda. I don't think it probably helps me go to sleep, but it probably doesn't help me stay asleep. Why am I saying probably? It doesn't, and I know that because I've drank before. See last few podcasts. Um, the flies were in my house and I had a bottle, a plastic bottle. Why do I even care? It was a vitamin water bottle that I didn't even have. Why do I care? Why, why do I think, you, why am I even saying any of this? Does anyone relate? <laughs> you ever get so in your head? You just watched me go so deep into my like layers of thoughts and I was trying harder than all of that to remember to come back to the flies in my house. Anyways, I'm only remembering the fly because it's flying around right there. And I don't have... I'll get to it. I took the bottle. <laughs> get past it, Max. And I the bottle part and I cut like here and then it says you flip the narrow end into the thing and then you fill it up to a little bit below where the lid is on the bottle with water and stuff and you put some sweet shit on there and then the flies go in there and they're supposed to die um and that didn't work I put um I cooked some chicken and I put some chunks of raw chicken in there I put some sugar in I sprinkled honey around the I made it like a sweet raw chicken margarita And uh, no flies landed in it at all. But what I did do, um, I had some like window cleaner 
and just sort of like all purpose multi surface spray, not to brag. And I, uh, I just thought, you know, if I was the size of a fly and somebody put me in a bath full of, albeit, yeah, all purpose, multi surface, whatever. But if they put me in a vat or a, I don't know what a vat is, a bathtub, a, if they soaked me in cleaning chemicals, where even if for multiple surfaces applicable for most, I feel like if I was a fly or the size of a fly, that amount of chemicals all around me would kill me. So I did that to the flies. I I sprayed the dickens out of them with this all-purpose cleaner. And the cool thing about doing that is, so first of all, it was they would be flying around, and I would, like, snipe them. Um, and uh, sorry, Peter, or whatever, but they're flies, and I know that flies are important for a ecosystem thing. But the way I see it... Um, if you're going to be on human property and you're not like, I don't know, at least paying taxes, you don't have human rights. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fucking kill you. <laughs> and <laughs> because of that, uh, or no, anyways, now I was, I guess in a roundabout way, back to me being paranoid in my own head and the soda bottle thing, same shit. Sorry I killed a bunch of flies, but I did, and the past is the past. Even though I'm probably going to kill this fly when I'm done with this. But I was sniping them out of the air with the <laughs> thing, and, uh, and then I would take like a rag and kind of grab them and then just throw them in the trash or something. And uh, But what was cool, after like 45 minutes of just absolutely napalming these flies, just oppenheiming these flies. Um, first, I got a bunch. I, I didn't kill it. I killed them. And after after I got a bunch of them, I was, you know, I, the flies in my face had slowed down because at first it was like, fucking get out of the way. Like, wait, I was around a cow or something, but then it was to where, like, they weren't by my face. I would just see one flying over there, over there or something. And they'd be like, all right, cool. We got most of them. Uh, and then the cool part is I was looking around after, after I had just <coughs> some other war-related joke to killing all these flies. Um, the whole kitchen was full of like every <laughs> the multiple surfaces in the kitchen was covered in the multiple surface kitchen spray which was so fucking ideal it was the multi surfaces dead flies and i was picking up the dead flies with rags so the whole time i was cleaning the kitchen without knowing it i thought i was just murder but no i was being productive and i would go You know how cleaning works. Unless you don't. That's how you wipe something down. And that super hard to figure out movement is why your roommate hates you. Because you can't do that. <laughs> what do you do when you're with people and you take a drink out of something and some of it spills onto your shirt or leg or pant? Pants. What do you do? You go. And it, well, I guess this is two different things. One, you pull the drink away from your face and it spills off the can onto your leg. What do you do? And then second, totally separate question, you take a sip and it goes like from your mouth down your shirt. Because I feel like this off the can is a little more understandable off your lip, you're a little more subject to someone being like, ha, ah, wipe your face, idiot, or whatever. What do you do in that? And then, oh, and then also what do you do when 
Let's say you drink a carbonated thing, and uh, you fucking, uh, you know when it, it's not a burp, but you get the hot air that like s- flies out of your nose and it just hurts, and then you go, uh, and then your eyes start watering, and then your friends are like. Did, did you just watch the Barbie movie? Why are you crying? And I'd be like, no, dude, I just... I drank a soda pop. But you didn't drink soda, because soda... Because I'm insecure about soda. And then, side note, we drank Sprite on the episode of Down. Um, I'm healthy. And... um <sighs> Look at you, Max. You are doing well. You are doing good at talking, and then you forgot what you were saying. Dumbass. <sighs> the carbonated thing, and it burns your nostrils, and you cry, and then your friends make fun of you. What do you do when that happens? You know? What else? How do, how do you guys cover uh, your... How do you get over urinal anxiety? Um, That's a thing. So this is a question... I will ask it on all of our behalf. If you don't, if if what I'm about to ask when I'm done sounds like stupid, th- it wasn't for you. This question isn't for you, and that's great that you can just pull your dick out and piss anywhere you want without like any second thought. But like, you know, you know what I mean. This not everything is for everything, and so. You're if if you're like me, you'll be at like a dinner or you'll be at a show, you'll be at something, and <laughs> without getting into like the whole big picture of like planning your fucking life around the bathroom, like the Crohn's disease commercials, <laughs> um, but like, how do you? You're at you're at the thing. You feel that feeling you're like at some point i'm gonna have to pee and it's not bad it's not terrible but it's there but like you know just because of your past like in like five or ten minutes like i am gonna have to go to the bathroom and i really really hope that like there's just nothing hindering that because um like you gotta go to the bathroom and then you're going to go uh I don't know, five, ten minutes passes, and then you're like, I go to the bathroom. And it's still, at this point, it's like, you gotta go. But it's not an emergency emergency. But it's like, at this point, you've grown to know yourself where you're like, I gotta at least get it to where it's gonna sting. Because then I know, like, there are some points where when you're going to the bathroom, it's just whether you have anxiety or not, if you have a chance to get the shit out of you, you're gonna. Um, and there are sometimes when that happens, but like usually you want to, you know, not seem like you have to have to go to the bathroom cause you're being cordial or whatever. But like, you're like, Hey, excuse me, going to the bathroom. And then you go to the bathroom and then what happens? You go in and I'm going to add, let's say before all this happens, if you're on a time crunch, all of this times five, it's way worse. Like, if you're like, uh, fuck, uh, especially if it's like, I gotta go to the bathroom before this thing because I don't want to have to go to the bathroom during it, forget about it. You're not gonna go to the bathroom. I'm not gonna go to the bathroom because even, no matter how bad I have to, shit locks up. But, um, you gotta uh, go, you excuse yourself, you go to the bathroom, and there's like a few urinals there. And ideally, you want a solo bathroom that no one's in, that you can lock the door and do your thing. Personally, I like to sit. It's nice. You get to take a minute, hang out. Like, I get why girls do it. I'm pretty sure that's the only reason. It's just comfortable. Um, but you you sit down or stand, whatever. You go in the bathroom. And there's, let's say, let's say urinals. Four of them. Three and the little one. <laughs> there's, always, there's always the one for kids. Um, and... Uh, we're at a place in society where apparently if, if you ever use that one, then that's fucking stupid. Um, but 
you go in there and there's like one guy there. It's not a huge deal. Most people would handle it. But if you're like me, who this question is for, you'll get it. Even if there's one person there. If there's one person in the stall, eh, maybe that's okay. But like if someone's at the sink, no. If someone's just in the bathroom, just, I don't know, talking or whatever, no. If there's If it's silent, if someone's in the stall and it's silent, forget it's not happening because i feel like maybe what it is is subconsciously at the end of the end of the day it's like what if i push so hard that i fucking shit myself and that usually doesn't happen but i just um anyway you're slurring max those two drinks are getting you um but you're in the bathroom and like you there's people in there Maybe they're not like right up next to you. I feel like most people understand if someone's like shoulder to shoulder with you, it's hard to pee even if you don't have urinal anxiety. It's just like everyone's looking at each other's dicks and that's weird. Um, But it's just, I feel like just the way bathroom, bathrooms should not be so acoustically sound. They shouldn't be like in the bathroom, every noise you make is amplified and that sucks. That's terrible, and I think that's why I, I love a vent in a bathroom. I like, like when people leave the sink on in the bathroom, like, I get it. Yeah, you just, you need a noise. Even if it's not for anyone, if there's no one in the house and you know that, like, you just, it's too quiet. It's, bathrooms are silent, and that's annoying, especially because you know everyone else can hear it. Um, so, like, what what do you do? How do you get over your, it, let's say you're in the bathroom, there's only a urinal. You're between two people, and you're too anxious. Your anxiety is too bad. Like you're not going to go into the handicap stall that's open because you think for some reason every handicapped person in the world is going to show up in the bathroom as soon as you go in there, and you're going to look like a dick. Um, or I don't know. You can't use the stall. It's just it's urinals, and that's the hardest way to do it. <laughs> if you're like, yeah, boy. Um, how do you, how do you combat it? Do you just hold it? Do you just, do you just wait till you like literally are about to pop and you're just, you know, run to the bathroom like, I don't care. Or do you just, can you just wait it out? Do you, do you go outside and just sprint and sweat it out of your skin? I don't know. And these are why we ask these questions. And I think I asked what I wanted to ask. How, when you have urinal anxiety, tips was a quicker way I could have said that. Yeah. Yeah, I could have done that. Fucking dipshit. Me, not you. I remembered that. Did I finish talking about the flies? <laughs> uh, there was another thing that I remembered talk that i wanted to talk about while i was talking about the urinal anxiety thing but i didn't want to like you know do the thing i had already done five times and like kept forgetting but uh, it was going to be another like sidebar about how uh, pissing in the urinal and the blah 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 it's like I don't know. Let's just talk about it for a minute. Um, it's not when you're at your house. If you have urinal anxiety, okay, I think it's called urinal anxiety, not bathroom anxiety, because it kind of does specifically happen at a urinal. If you're in a stall or somewhere you have like a little bit of privacy, it's all good. But like w when you're just shoulder to shoulder, especially if you're used to sitting, it sucks. It's awful. Um, it just it's it sucks to it sucks when you're like not in the bathroom but you know you have to go and but you know that oh this is what i was gonna say um when i was in new york with my mom um, when i was uh, just about 21 years old i went to new york with my mom for a wedding i'll tell oh, i kind of want to talk just talk about that because it was so fun but first the main thing um I'm going to write. Why don't we write shit down? Okay. New York. New York. Eh, B-O-M. 
urinal. That's the story I'm talking about now. And then the one I'm going to get to later Uh, uh, uh. Okay. So, I was in New York. <laughs> see, you're you're watching me. Isn't it kind of cool to see like me doing the the process, or just like watch like? I think thoughts are so cool. I think it's cool watching somebody work something out, um, and just seeing. I'm trying to like articulate every thought that's happening in my brain because I think that that's cool. And I think that um, it's it's sort of like the, the saying uh, when somebody says like, you know, everybody's heard that story. Yes, but nobody's heard it told by you. I think it's cool. And I think when you try to, you know, to, like, talk about every all the little feelings and whatever intricacies, even talking about me forgetting something or the urinal thing, I think it's cool because it's somewhat maybe hopefully original and hopefully people relate to it and does that make sense does this sound like buzzed ramblings because it is i was in new york and i know that because i wrote it down we're learning and um at intermission <laughs> skipped something max idiot <laughs> i skipped so much of not i didn't skip a lot for this story i went to the book of mormon musical in new york with my mom and during intermission okay you missed that part you're chilling but it did make me think of another thing cool so um, but, but I was at the Book of Mormon and the intermission happened, which they do. They usually before act two. And I was like to my mom, I was like, yo, yo, ma, not the cello player, but my mom, I got to go to the bathroom. So I went and there was a... Uh, <laughs> Fuck. Back to you know me talking about every little fucking thing I'm thinking. That last thing I said, I tried to say it really well. Unless you didn't think it was really well, then I didn't really try that well, that hard. Fuck. Uh, I tried to do that because I kind of want to clip me saying that because I. <laughs> that's how f we're in the weeds of it now. The thing I said five seconds ago, I kind of tried because I was like, this might be a cool thing to clip if I say it right. Intermission happened. I told my mom, hey, mom, I'm going to the fucking bathroom. And she was like, fuck yeah, Max. She doesn't swear. I didn't swear. I made that part up. I did say I was going to the bathroom. No. And I went. She doesn't know this. I might send this to my mom, just this part. Just because, honestly, nothing's going to change if she knows that I did this. But this is what I did. Um, I went, walked out off the, we were in the nosebleeds, went to the bathroom, got in the line. And right when the intermission, I was, honestly, I was pretty, uh, pretty far up there. Up in the front of the line. Like, I was like, sick, I'm going to be able to get back in time. Awesome. And I uh, got to the bathroom. And it was just my turn. I was good to go. I was at a urinal. And I couldn't couldn't go to the bathroom. Anxiety. A bunch of a bunch of who was I around when I was there? What what was the demographic of the Book of Mormon on Broadway? A couple years after it had been on. Uh, I don't know. See honestly, it seemed like a I feel like if, if Book of Mormon was playing in Boise, the crowd that would have been there was also in the Broadway. Like, it was just a bunch of, like, older, like, white dudes. And now that I say that out loud, it makes sense because I was at the line for the men's restroom. <laughs> and that tracks. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Um. Anyways, I was in the bathroom at the book mart by a bunch of older white dudes, and they can all. Uh, I don't. I'm. I'm really scared for when I turn into this. I hope I don't. But I really don't want to be the guy that has to make a noise after every little movement he makes. Like, just... Da-na-na, da-na-na, because their sports center fucking app always goes off. It's so annoying. I, I, I've, I've never downloaded sports center, and I hope I don't get... <laughs> I want to get to that age, but I don't want me to get to that age and make me think that I have to get Sports Center on my phone and not know how to turn the sounds off of things. Sidebar. The point is, I was about around a bunch of dudes who didn't give a fuck about normal bodily functions, which is something that I wish I had, but I didn't. And so, still don't. And they... They did their thing, and I couldn't pee. So I was just sitting there waiting forever. And eventually it got to where I was like, all right, I've been standing here for a while. If I keep standing here, people are going to be like, yo, what are you doing? And I'm going to have to be like, eh, I'm jerking off? I don't Like, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. I was pinned. And so I just acted like i had gone because the the bathrooms they they were kind of like i mean people were talking and stuff so like you couldn't tell that's the, that's the other thing that sucks about pissing in like a quiet bathroom it when there's people in it is if nobody's talking you can tell who's pissing and that sucks because i feel like a lot of dudes like compare the times people are taking to like to make sure you weren't faking it or whatever <laughs> like i felt like if i if if it was quiet in that bathroom and I didn't make any sounds of urine hitting the urinal, because at the time, I stood when I peed all the time, which goes to show. It wasn't just because I sat down. I've done both. Sitting's a move. I went from standing to sitting, and you fucking got to watch the Curb Your Enthusiasm where they talk about it. That one's pretty good. Or just try. I don't know. But... Uh, <clears throat> If there was the sound of urine hitting the thing and, like, I knew people could hear it, like, I would have left probably even earlier. But when it's quiet and you hear that sound, I feel like everyone is just sort of judging everyone based on what? I don't know. For some reason, in my head, you're more of, like, your opinion over these dudes who you don't care what they think about you is going to be better if you piss as long and as hard as they do. What? <laughs> it's fun to be a guy. And honestly, it, yeah, that was that was selfish. It, for the most part, this is a very niche thing that is kind of only a problem to me and whoever else relates to this. If you don't eat a dick, don't eat a dick. You're just, you're you and you're different. That's awesome. You're not different. You're honestly probably more normal. It's us who are different, who can't go to the bathroom meanwhile deer and squirrels and shit deer and squirrels will piss and shit <laughs> in front of anyone including squirrels and deers what's wrong with us we have a, uh, I, don't know. I blame taxes i think taxes gave us all i think taxes started mental illness <laughs> That's fucking stupid. Um, anyways, I feel like, it, yeah, if you can't hear the sound of piss hitting the urinal, then dudes are going to think you're dumb or something. <laughs> and I don't want that. I guess I didn't want that at the time. Anyways, the point is I just stood at the urinal for a urinal's amount of time and then acted like I was done, washed my hands, Pre-COVID, been doing it since day one. T 
teacher, kindergarten teacher, something told me, wash your hands. And because of that, I felt like I've always had to. So I do, even though I feel like it's probably more clean to wash your hands before you go to the bathroom because you're touching your dick with your outside air hands. Anyways, that's just the uh, sidebar. Um, so I left the bathroom. And then as I was walking back to uh, as I was walking back to where my mom was, I was like, "Okay, Max, urinal anxiety got the best of you." But this line's pretty long, and none of these people really you uh, you don't know anyone here. You can just hop back in line and no one will really be the wiser. And then probably by the time you're in the bathroom, you're going to piss like a fucking rice horse. I don't like saying piss. That sounds white trash. But pee sounds juvenile. And urinate sounds like a scientist. And 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. But I uh, got back in line. Line moved back up. Got into the bathroom. And then at this point, oh, here was my first. I wanted a stall. But it was like that thing where like, a urinal was open, but I wanted a stall to be open, but the line was so long that I wanted to kind of be a team player for everybody, so I got in the thing, uh, in the urinal thing, but like, but then when I th- went through the second time, stall opened. Crisis averted. We're good. Figured it out. Got to take a seat. That was nice. Dick touched the water. Not a brag. Most toilets are small when they're not the ones you're used to. Um. Anyways, and then I went back and hung out with my mom, and watched the Book of Mormon. It was great. But uh, and then the second thing I wrote down, <laughs> I just wanted to talk about New York because it was such a fun trip. But I went to New York with my mom a few years ago. Uh, a lot of years, uh, five, six years ago. I went. Uh, it was like a my mom went. My mom was going to New York for a wedding. And I had just turned 21. So I went with her. It was like a, I guess like a late 21st slash party in New York with my mom. And we, I think we were there for three or four days. But we, on one day, we saw, or the whole trip, we saw three Broadway shows. We saw the Avenue Q. That was the first one. And then we saw, I can't remember the order. It was, we saw School of Rock and Book of Mormon. I think we saw School of Rock second and ended on the Book of Mormon. But we saw those and it was so much fun and it was the best thing I'd ever seen. It was so awesome being on a Broadway show, being on like a, at a Broadway show on Broadway and it was just everything I'd ever dreamed of. And it was so cool being able to like be next to my mom and being able to recite the whole book of Mormon musical word for word next to her. And then also when we were there, um, my, we did the, if you're in New York, as someone has been to New York one and a half times, (laughs) I went once this story and then another time, but I was sick the whole time. I was just in like the hotel, basically. Um, but if if you're a seasoned New Yorker like <laughs> like I am, I'm not. Um, there's in Times Square. There, well, I mean, there's a website, but it's more fun this way. There's if you're in Times Square, there's these big red bleachers, and there's usually I mean stuff happens on those sometimes. But behind them, underneath, there's some ticket offices. And it's like TK something at the whatever the website is, but basically they say it's like a standby tickets for a plane, but for uh, Broadway shows, so shows that don't they don't sell all the seats or whatever. You can go there the day of a show and you can get a discount on some unsold seats, and that's what we did. And it's the move. Like if you're if you don't really care definitely do it for a show that like you're familiar with. If you like really care about a show, maybe you know splurge and pay full price for those tickets but like if there's just a show that you really really love and you just haven't seen it live or something and you're in new york like do that like yeah if you just want to be in the theater around it it's the move so we did that and it was great 
Uh, but and also it's cool because uh, just like the standby tickets at an airport, sometimes you'll get like an unsold first class seat, and just like this, we got some really nice nosebleed seats. They're pretty nice. We could, there was a chunk of the stage we couldn't see, but it's okay because Broadway bootlegs exist, and I know amongst thespians, that's not chill to say that you know those are a thing, but or that you partake, but uh. As cool as you thespians, me included, think you are, most of the world thinks you're a fucking dork. So let's just play pretend and watch our little silly musicals and not act like we're in the CIA, okay? So watch a bootleg. Get the discounted tickets. Live your life. Um... And so we were at the Book of Mormon at the in the nosebleeds, and this guy sat next to us, and he was had this like a very heavy Australian accent, I remember. And uh, he was like, "Oi, what are you guys doing here? What are you? What brings you to New York?" Because we we did I forgot we did mention that we were not from New York. And he was uh, we were like McCall or something, and he was like, "I don't know where the fuck that is," and we we're like, "That's fair, man." I barely know where Australia is. I know it's a continent and a country, which is pretty cool. Um, and then he went to the bar, and he was like, I'm going to get a drink. You want something? And my mom, she don't drink. But I was like, and I was, I had never had this drink. I just heard I heard Hannibal Burris say it in a joke in one of his specials, and I wanted that. And I was like, give me a gin and ginger ale to go. I don't like this place. And he was like, huh? I was like, gin and ginger ale. And he was like, oh, okay, sure. And then he went, and uh, I think they didn't have gin or something, so they put, like, whiskey or whatever. But I didn't really care. I just wanted the cocktail. But they gave me the cool little Broadway sippy cup that you all get. And I'm pretty sure I took it, like everyone's supposed to, but I think I lost it somewhere. We'll find it. Anyways, then after that, we went to School Rock, and that was amazing. And I'm pretty sure Alex Brightman was in it at the time. He might not have been. I should look it up. Max, when you're editing this, look it up, and you'll put correct or incorrect right there. Give yourself something to do so that, I mean, this is also, if if you're ever watching an episode of ours, and I make, like, a very direct, like, note to me the guy who edits all these and it doesn't happen it means i skipped over it usually is what that means i do try to watch them but like you try listening to yourself this fucking much it sucks speaking of i'm gonna be done with this now i've been talking for an hour (laughs) that's awesome um hey you have a pretty good whatever it is and uh i love you